Okay, let's uh, discuss how do you detect if somebody has tuberculosis. The test is called Mantox test, or another name can also be tuberculin test or PPD test. So, what do you do? Essentially, first you inject the suspected patient with a PPD. PPD is purified protein derivative that is taken from the mycobacterium tuberculosis and you inject it to the skin, to the patient, and then the dendritic cells, called the Langerhans and dendritic cells of skin, will digest it and work as an APC. And after the whole sequence, there will be an induration, which means thickening, and erythema, which means reddening of the skin. And by this reaction, you can know that the person has tuberculosis. But this will apply to a person that has already been given a vaccine to tuberculosis. So essentially, we will use it for a diagnosis of exclusion. And remember, this manteau test is not a vaccine. The actual va vaccine is called BCG, Bacillus calmatigorin. So in other words, manteau tests will be used only if the person has been vaccinated. So what can be other uh, types of delayed type of hy uh, hypersensitivity? This can be drug-induced tuberointestitial nephritis. This is for a chronic use of different analgesics or antibiotics such as methicillin. It can be by a prolonged farmer's lung. You remember that was a type 3 hypersensitivity and could have been caused by thermophilic actinomycitis or agricultural products. This can also be by a chronic asthma rhinitis which is essentially TH2 induced. Uh, this is one of the exceptions in type 4 hypersensitivity where well, you will see TH2. This can also be caused by contact dermatitis. This is usually associated if you are allergic to uh, different metals such as nickel or some substances such as uh, urochiol that is found in poison ivy and poison oak that will cause this reaction. Another example can be the famous multiple sclerosis in which your basic myelin protein will work as the antigen. Or another example can be Guillain-Barre neuropathy in which you have a peripheral neuropathy defect and the antigen will be your Schwann cells products. And the last example can be the famous diabetes mellitus type 1 where the attacked area is usually the beta cells of pancreas, which are the insulin-producing cells. All right, so you remember there were two major classifications of type 4 hypersensitivity. The first one was the delayed type, and the second one is the T-cell-mediated direct cytotoxicity. So this is essentially the same way as natural killer cells and CD8 work. The major difference between these two reactions is that this type is CD8 mediated, while the others was CD4 mediated. So where can examples of these be? In transplantation, this is done by graft versus host disease, where you will have a rejection of the transplanted organ. So the organ that the recipient will receive will be rejected by the recipient's antibodies and uh, cells. Other example can be tumors. If you have a tumor, the natural killer cell or the CD8 cells will kill it instantly. And also virus infected cells. What do the, all of these have in common? The direct cytotoxicity. This means that the CD8 will bind directly to them and then they will release a pore-like structure called perforin which will penetrate the cells and then the CD8 cells will also re release proteins called gramzyme A and B. These will enter the affected cell and initiate the caspase complexes, which will cause apoptosis of the cells. And this is about it, about type 4 hypersensitivity. Thank you.